All right, let's talk about Blade. So before we get into this, like, subscribe, comment, share your favorite opinions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your favorite moments, your least favorite moments, your overall opinion of the movie. What did you like? What did you dislike? Do you even like the movie? But let's get into this. So, Blade is, it stars Wesley Snipes and Chris Christopherson, I believe how is how you pronounce his name. And it's an incredible rated, uh, hard R comic book movie. Way better than Deadpool. It's very dark, very gritty, very bloody, very gory, full of sexual situations and all kinds of scenes. Uh, the action in here, Wesley Snipes does most of his fight choreography, his stunts. It comes off beautiful on screen. It, it doesn't come off with cheesy backflips and all kinds of unrealistic things. It's just a bunch of punching, kicking, and kicking ass. <coughs> so this movie... And the setup for this is so beautiful. It's such an amazing comic book movie. It feels like its own very lived-in world. The culture, the vampire culture is so rich in here. There's all kinds of fascinating things, all kinds of interesting things. It is just simply amazing. Like, the vampires, they have the these group of people... They have their own agents, essentially, which move around during the day. They have these marks on them. They're referred to as familiars. It's glyphs on the back of their neck to tell which vampire clan they belong to, who they belong to. So should another vampire attack one of them, then by vampire law, I guess they'll, try, they'll either murder them or trial and convict them. The the elder vampires, the pure bloods, are much more civilized. They do things sort of by a book, by the book. But then you have radical extremists like Deacon Frost, who's half human, half vampire, half breed, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, he was a human that got turned into a vampire, and that's a whole different thing for them. You have this other group of civilized type vampires that are suits, and they're pure blood. Now, they butt heads with Deacon because he's putting their community in danger with his flashy nightclubs, that, with these sprinklers that just spray people with blood. And uh, But familiars, they move around during the day and take care of the stuff that vampires normally can't. There's all kinds of familiars. They show their loyal until that loyalty is paid off by being turned. Uh, there's all kinds of other fascinating things in here. They use blood banks and all kinds of stuff to keep their world going. They they have nightclubs marked with glyphs, special signs that let you know they're vampire clubs. It's a very rich, rich culture. Very rich, lived-in world. And Blade is simply a badass. So from the start, we get a pretty epic fight scene. The music it goes with, it's just very hardcore. It's bloody, gory, gritty. Uh, so this girl takes this guy to a nightclub, and people are pushy down there. The whole crowd, it seems a little bit not the kind of crowd you want to be involved in. Uh, the kind of dicks to this one human dude, and then it comes out that they're all vampires when the sprinklers start spraying everybody in blood, and they show their teeth, and they try to get them. And then he crawls to a pair of very clean boots, and there stands Blade, looking like a badass in the shades, his black leather trench coat, he's got the vest and everything. He's all tricked out with all kinds of weapons, silver stakes, silver sword. Uh, and he just goes off, man. He's got, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's kind of like this boomerang thing that he, he just throws around, decapitating vampires. He's got silver bullets. He's just spraying them down, and they... Burst into ash, kind of similar to how they do on Buffy. That the opening fight scene and and Wesley Snipes does his own fight choreography, so it looks really great on scene. And he doesn't do like the ridiculous flips, you know, that are common. He just punching, kicking, you know, taking names and kicking ass. That the one guy, uh, I can't remember the actor's name that plays him, but he. 
his character's name Quinn in here. He's played Harvey Bullock on Gotham. He he played in that Ghost Rider movie, which I just did a review on. But it's kind of funny to see him here in another Marvel movie. That he's a big like kind of sub antagonist, pretty much the main henchman of the main antagonist, which is Deacon Frost. So Quinn is like his right hand man. Uh, but. He, Quinn ends up escaping, going to the hospital. There, Blade comes to finish him off. Before he gets there, though, Quinn wakes up, and it's a vicious, brutal, violent scene. He he, he bites one doctor, and the uh, hematologist gets bit, too. The other guy gets killed. Um, and then Blade kind of... he, She reminds him of his mother, who he lost in childbirth and so he he ends up taking her you see these soft sentimental sides of blade even though he does come off like a hard ass and that's probably the most beautiful thing about this is the the relationship between blade and wesler is essentially it's hard ass tough love but it's very father son type relationship and the way it comes off like they they truly care for each other underneath the surface of it all, but on the surface, they're just hard asses on each other. A man's man, like, like calling each other names and all kinds of stuff. And, and the dialogue in here, it's pretty great at all. I mean, you got Wessler showing up to Slave Blade at some point. And he's like, uh, he, he said, catch you fuckers at a bad time. And then you got, you know, Wesley Snipes saying lines like, some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. So, it's really rich. I mean, they don't shy away from cussing, sexual situations, or any of that. And there's all kinds of interesting gory depths in here. Different types. You got heads blowing up, like expanding and exploding. You got arms and limbs getting just cut off clean. You got... Faces being grinded up against trains. and Man, they do not shy away from the hard R. Like comic book movies do these days. The closest thing we have since Blade is probably Deadpool or Logan. But Blade just does it so much better, man. This movie is absolutely amazing from start to finish. And characters like Deacon Frost, that they are such an interesting villain because they want to change the way that vampires essentially live. Vampires hide in the shadows and they operate in the shadows and Deacon Frost he's inspired by Blade. He wants that too. He even puts on sunblock in here and walks around in the daylight to confront Blade at one point and try to talk to him, try to get him on board with what he wants to do and he's researching this ancient ritual where he can sacrifice all, basically all the main board members, the pure blood vampires, in exchange for like godhood. And there's some pretty interesting. There's an interesting twist in here for Blade when he finds out that his mother isn't isn't actually dead. She's been there this whole time, and Deacon Frost was the one that turned turned her. And, but you have other other things in here that are just fascinating like for instance what happens to a vampire when it goes wrong sometimes it goes wrong and you see that there's like this zombie in there you also see like an obese vampire he almost looks like mojo from x-men seriously uh pearl is what he was called he's just sitting there at a computer and he looks like mojo from x-men it it's hilarious. Uh, Blade cooks that dude so much. Man. And from the scene where he rescues her from the hospital, like, he just tosses her out the window, like, little to, to no regard for her own life. And he just he does this amazing jump from, from out the window across to the rooftop. The fight scenes are incredible in here, man. The action... The action, the dialogue, 
everything is top notch. Blade can be beat. People go on and on about how Black Panther is like the first black superhero movie or whatever, but there's been several black superhero movies before, and this one tops. This one tops almost all superhero movies altogether. This. This is so awesome. Just incredible movie, start to finish. Everybody should see this. It, even though it's been like 20 years, or it's almost been like 20 years since it came out, it's still just as good as it was when it came out, and it, it still holds up to movies today. This movie, it, it's like a timeless classic, man. Absolutely incredible. They need to. They, and there's even talks to this day with Kevin Feige talking about possibly bringing Wesley Snipes into the MCU. Now, there's absolutely no way that would work, seeing how Blade was compared to what the MCU is, unless they put it, you know, under a different, a different like little sub banner or sub company, whatever you want to call it. Like I mentioned in my Ghost Rider video that they could put it under something like Fox Searchlight and give it a hard R. That that to me would be the best way to continue this. You could combine him once they get their hands back on Daredevil, Punisher, and those other characters that are in that darker, grittier verse. You could combine them and have something truly great. You might even be able to, you know, you could probably pull off something with Doctor Strange and Blade, possibly, but that might be hard. I wouldn't really like to see Blade in any kind of PG-13 setting. This here is absolutely fantastic, amazing. Everybody that hasn't watched it should watch it, but of course, this is a spoiler video, so, <laughs> so I should have said earlier, like, if you haven't seen this movie, don't listen to this review. Just get the hell out of here. And go watch it and then come back here. But it's too late for that. So Wessler was absolutely amazing in this too. It's He's such a badass man. He's such an old tough badass. And these these guys have their hard stories. You know, their, their troubled past. Their, you know, that sentimental touchy stuff. That's heartbreaking. They have all that. It's very rich in all kinds of ways. But, you know, there's some sad moments in here, too. The Between Wessler and and uh, Blade. The, man, they really fucked up Wesker. But, so, essentially, Blade also has to take his cures and stuff. And, you know, having, having this woman alongside of him that specializes in this field really comes into play not just with improving his serum but also improving his weapons and it results in some very awesome stuff blades car is awesome absolutely awesome muscle car not too big on motorcycles but his motorcycle is pretty good you just don't get to see too much of it i prefer the muscle car anyways this movie for me absolutely amazing 10 out of 10 like, subscribe, comment, ring that bell for notifications. I do check out my other videos. I'll keep them coming. Uh, I'm not monetized, so if you want to support my channel, check out my PayPal me link. Uh, anything helps, whatever you want to contribute. If you don't want to contribute, that's fine. I'll keep pushing the content. Thanks for viewing. Stay awesome and rock on.